Welcome back to AP Chemistry. In this series of lessons, we're going to be continuing our study of acids and bases. And specifically in this uh, series of lessons, we're looking at how acids and bases will react with each other. And so there are basically three ways that this can happen. We can have strong acids and strong bases, as we have here. Later on in a, a future video, we'll take a look at how uh, strong bases react with weak acids. And then finally, we'll see how uh, weak bases react with strong acids. And so we'll use those three different combinations. Now anytime you have a strong acid and a strong base react with each other, as we have in this example, where hydrochloric acid and potassium hydroxide react, well, we always want to realize that the net ionic reaction is always going to be the same. And there aren't too many things that are always uh, in, in chemistry, uh, in AP chemistry, but this is one of them. Uh, this will always be the net ionic reaction for a strong acid, strong base. We'll have H plus plus OH negative yields water. So if we recognize that there's a strong acid, one of our big six, and then uh, one of the eight strong bases, well, this is the net ionic equation we can write for that. So for example, uh, for the equation we have up here, you know, that's the net ionic equation. Everything else would be a spectator ion. So in our hydrochloric acid, that would be chloride, Cl negative, and then the potassium, uh, K plus, would be the spectator ion as well. well let's take a look, a look at this example, where we have a student that adds 150 milliliters of 0.5 molar nitric acid to 300 milliliters of 0.3 molar sodium hydroxide. Let's give the net ionic equation. Well, once you recognize that it's a strong acid and a strong base, we can write that pretty easily. Now, the spectator ions that are present after this reaction is over. Well, hopefully you see that nitrate, NO3, negative, is a spectator ion, as well as the sodium ion, Na positive. So those are the spectators. Now, calculating the pH of this is a little bit more involved, but it's certainly uh, very uh, straightforward to do. The best way to do it, in my opinion, is to use an ice box. But this time we're going to use an ice box with moles. And so what that means, we'll set up our little ice box here, and we have to figure out the moles of acid first. Well, if we take 0.15 liters times 0.5 molar, we can figure out the moles of the acid. So 0.15 times 0.5 would be 0 0.075 moles. So that's how many moles of acid. We do the same thing for the base. We take 0.3 molar times 0.3 liters. And so for the hydroxide, we can see that's going to be 0 0.09 moles of hydroxide. We know that there's a bunch of water here, but we really don't care about that because it doesn't really affect the uh, the chemistry uh, at this level anyway. So here are the amount of reactants. And by looking at that, you know, the nice thing about acid-base reactions are these are pretty much one-to-one -one ratios. So can we determine which one is going to run out first, the limiting reactant? Well, you can see that this one right here, there's, well, there's less of that. So it's going to run out first. So we can subtract 0.075 moles from both sides. Our acid is gone has a zero mole value, and we're left with 0 0.015 moles of hydroxide. Now, if we're interested in finding the pH, we need to, uh, first of all, find the molarity of the hydroxide. Now, since we have more hydroxide excess, this is going to be a basic solution. So we're looking for a pH that's going to be greater than 7. Now, now to find the molarity of this, we have to take the moles of hydroxide, and divide by the total volume of solution. So we have 150 mils of acid and 300 mils of base. So that's 450 mils, or we divide that by 0.45 liters of solution. So when we divide that out, of course we know where that comes from. That's the total volume. And the hydroxide concentration when you divide is 0 0.0333 molar, approximately. So if we know that, then we're in this home stretch of the problem here. We just take the negative log of hydroxide to find the pOH. 
So that's 1.477. And once we know the pOH, well, we just subtract from 14 and we can get the pH. So it's about 12.52 in that neighborhood. Let's try another example to make sure that we understand how to do this. This time, the student is going to add 290 milliliters of 0.2 molar hydrobromic acid to 185 milliliters of 0.15 molar barium hydroxide. Now, the net ionic equation is basically the same as it was before. It's a strong acid and a strong base, so it's the same net ionic equation. The spectator ions, well, hopefully we can see that everything else that's not in the net ionic is going to be a spectator. So that would be including the bromide and the barium ions. Those will be uh, spectator ions. Now the last part, the pH, we have to go about this using the same method we did before. We're going to make uh, an ice box with the moles this time. So I'm going to set that up here. The moles of, of uh, hydrogen ions of acid will be 0.29 liters times 0.2 molar. So when we multiply that out on our calculator, we get about 0 0.058 moles when you compute that. And then we do the same thing for hydroxide. It's a little bit different though this time because we have 0.185 liters times 0.15 molar, but we have two hydroxides so it's a 2 to 1 ratio. So we actually have to take that and multiply it by 2 to find the moles of hydroxide that are here. So 0.185 liters times 0.15 molar times 2 would be about 0 0.0555 molar. And of course, we don't care about the water. So which one of these two is the limiting reactant? Well, hopefully you can see that there's less hydroxide. So that's going to run out first. So we're left with zero hydroxide, and we have a little bit of hydrogen ion. It's about 0 0.0025 moles. And so since we have excess hydrogen ions, this is going to be an acidic solution. So from this point, we can solve the problem as an acid. So if we have 0 0.00250 moles of hydrogen ion, we need to find the molarity of that. So we divide that by the volume. So the total volume is whatever 290 mils plus 185 mils would be. So when you compute that, you find that it's about 475 milliliters. So we divide the moles of hydrogen ion we got by that total volume. And when you do that, you get an answer of about 0 0.0053 molar. And once you know the hydrogen ion concentration, it's a really easy step to go from there to uh, the pH. Just take negative log of that, and it's about 2.28. And so this is how we can find the pH uh, of strong acid, strong base mixtures after they've been put together. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and hope you learned some chemistry. If you learned anything from this, then please give me a thumbs up and I hope you, and I hope you subscribe to my channel so that in the future we can learn some more AP chemistry together.